Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and today I'm going to get back at designing the awesome rolling toolbox. I've been away for a couple of weeks, so I had to get my head back in the game. I went down to the shop, I measured up the trailer, uh, the critical dimensions, the interior dimensions. That's what I'm going to be designing with here. I, I don't need the whole trailer and spend time modeling up the axles and the wheels and the tongue and all of that thing. might do that later for fun if I want to complete the model, but all I really need is the interior dimensions. Um, if you're building a shop in your garage or just a tool storage in your garage or a big shop or a truck or truck, all, all the principles apply. We're going to model up the space and then we're going to design using modeling in SketchUp um, how we're going to use that space. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw the floor of the trailer and I'm going to hit the R key for rectangle. Now I have the overall um, space there but I need to clip off the angles in the front, the V-nose, and to do that I'm going to hit the T key for the tape measure tool. This does not measure, this gives me guidelines. These are not part of the drawing, they're simply reference. So I clicked on that edge and I'm just going to come over here and you can see where it snaps. See it changes color to a little circle from a red square to a little sort of greenish circle. Click there, that gives me dead center, I don't have to do any math, I know I'm dead center. And then the, where the angle starts from the interior is 165 and a half. So I'll grab down here, just come up, click, type in 165.5, enter. I don't have to put the inch mark for inches. That's assumed if I'm doing feet and inches or feet, I have to put in the tick mark for feet. All right, what I have going on here is I don't want to go to the center point. What I want to do, I have actually a flat, a little flat plane here. And inside that flat plane is four and a quarter. So I want to put two more guidelines. So I'm going to go two and one eighth inches. And then I'm going to grab on that line and go 4.25. Enter. All right, now I'm ready to go line tool. Click to the intersection, there to the intersection. Come over there to the intersection and there. Then I'm going to hit the space bar. It gives me my black arrow selection tool. Go like that. Left to right selects everything that the box touches. Delete. If I come uh, left to right, it only selects what's in the square. And since nothing is in it, nothing selected, if I go the whole thing, you can see it's selected. So what I want to do is select just these three parts, the two edges and the plane. So click like that. Delete. All right, so now I have the overall dimensions of the interior. I'm going to hit Edit, Delete Guides. All right, so I am going to draw the walls um, so that I have something to pull up for the 3D space. As you can see, this is a flat plane. So back to the top-down view. Find the center again. I'll come down here. There's the center. And that gives me another reference line. And so half of 84 and 3 quarters should be 42 and 3 eighths. So let's grab that, drag that over, type in 42 and 3 eighths, enter. Double click, and then I'm going to shift. See, I can go the plus minus arrow. The plus minus comes up next to the selection arrow, and I'm going to click on the surface. Now I'm going to grab the offset tool which is F, and all I need to do is offset out to, there we go. All right, so now I have um, the walls and I have the floor. I wanna make sure these remain separate. I'm gonna go edit, delete guides, double click. That selects the floor surface. I'm gonna right click and make a group. I'm going to hit the, the M key for move, and I'm just going to move this out of the way for a moment. And I'm going to delete the floor. So I've got my walls and my floor separate. See, that's a group by the bounding box. This one is not a group yet, so I'm going to double click. That selects everything. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make a group. There's a million ways to do things in SketchUp. Other guys who have experience in learning a different way may mention something different, but this works for me and I find it very efficient. Okay, so now I have two different uh, parts of the model that are separate, they won't intersect, and that's what I need. Now, uh, on the 
<clears throat> walls, I want to show the opening uh, for the door. This will have a, some impact on my design in here because uh, the door doesn't open 100%. Uh, so I'll have a little bit of, of intrusion here. And I, if I have any long drawers or long garages that have to slide stuff in, I want to consider getting around that, that spot. So I'm going to hit the O key. And this just changes the view, the camera view. It does not edit the model when you hit the O key. Uh, just moving the camera around. So I'm going to uh, double click on that. That opens the group. Click on that. I'm going to hit the P key for push pull. You can see it highlights there. Draw it up any, any amount I want. I have the walls drawn up. And I want to cut this out. The height is 79 and a half. So I'm going to take my tape measure tool, start there. Go 79.5, enter, double click. That opens the group. You can see the dotted line, click again. That gives me the surface. Now I'm gonna hit my R key for rectangle. I could do it with a line tool, but rectangle's a little quicker. And then you can see now it separated that surface into two different, two different planes. P for push. I'm just gonna come over and highlight that. Just touch that inside edge, boom, it's gone. All right. Now, the other thing I want to be able to do is I want to be able to turn the view off and on. Now, again, I've got another screen over here that um, I have a lot. I usually keep my tools and everything over on the other screen so that my way, but you can't see my second screen. So I have one layer. You always want to draw on layer zero. First thing I'll do is create a new layer. I'm going to go plus. I'm going to call this floor. Enter, and then I'm going to go here and call this walls. And I'll click on the floor, and you can see down in here it is just called group one in model and it's showing the layer zero. I want to make that the floor. All right, and then I'm going to come in and click on the walls, which is all another group, and I'm going to change the walls to the walls layer. Now hopefully that makes sense. I've just created some layers and then when I click on, uh, you can see there's no entity info when nothing's selected. When it, whatever I select, there's only two things to select in the model right now. If I click on this, it shows floor. If I click on that, it shows walls. Um, and you can move them at this, you know, around to any layer that you create. Uh, but I rem remember, it is very critical. This little radial button here, it's blue clicked. Make sure that is where you draw everything. As long as that's clicked, uh, so if I were to draw on the floor layer, if I want to draw on the wall layer, and it's not a good habit, um, always draw on layer zero. I learned that early from some terrible mistakes. What I can do is if I click on the check the walls, you can see that the floor is all you can see. And now I can, you know, design on this and draw this up if I need to see where the heights are and how they fit on the walls. <clears throat> I can turn those on. So there's a little icon here, get models. Uh, if you don't have that there, you can go into your tools and, and bring tools up here. This is a tool set that I chose and put up there. It's in addition to these and some of these are duplicates. But anyway, so I'm going to go to get models. I'm going to type in Pulk and search. It'll bring up everything I've uploaded. So there is the Pulk uh, mobile wood shop. I'm going to click on that and download. And it'll ask me if I want to download it directly into the model. And I do. So obviously there's a lot of detail in there. It's a pretty big model. Uh, so it takes a second to download. Now um, I'll just bring it in. There it is over there. All right, so this model is a 3D model. It's complete. I did the exact same thing I'm doing the trailer. I drew the truck and um, I uh, you know, it's all in different layers. If you look over the layer panel now, when I brought this in, it brought in a bunch of uh, new layers. So I've got my floor layer and my wall layer, but now I've got the truck box, the text, and all that kind of thing. 
So I could just turn off visibility, say the truck box and the text and those kind of things. But they take up space in the model and can slow things down. Uh, even though I have 16 gigs of RAM, I still want to help it out. I can always download this model if I want an intact one again. And I'm going to hit delete. And I'm going to click on, you can see they're highlighting if you look at the uh, what I've selected, delete. And I'm going to get rid of the text. I could go over and delete them here as well, which I will, but I kind of wanted to show you the how I'm doing this. I don't need the box. It's not going to help us at all. I am just wanting the uh, cabinets and the tools because I'll be a lot of those will be the same. All right, and that's still in a group. Um, it's still protected. I'll be breaking that apart later. What I want to do now is the truck box. I'm going to hit the minus and then the text i'm going to hit the minus just might as well get rid of these layers so we're not now it says move to select the select layer is not empty uh, select action for content move to current layer move to default layer delete contents i'm going to cancel because i want to see what is in there i thought i got it okay so that is the right side i don't want to delete that left side floor tile Nothing there, so I'm going to hit that. I'm going to create another group, and I'm going to call it Mobile Wood Shop. And that will allow me to change the visibility. Back to there, click on that. Let's see. So you can see it's on layer zero. I'm going to go to Mobile Wood Shop. And now, everything that's in there, I'll be moving them later, but that at least allows me to Turn it off and on at this point. It's interesting to see, I'm just going to temporarily put it there and see how that space would have worked out. Yeah, so you can see uh, this is a good visual on the space I'm going to be dealing with. I am going to be uh, a lot less width. That foot makes a difference. I couldn't, uh, if I move these in, they would fit, but my my aisle way would be narrow. So this is telling me I'm going to have to be very careful with, um, I, you know, I need that space. That's working space. It's also nice storage space uh, if I'm picking up materials. Uh, so obviously I will have to. Now, fortunately, I'm. this is a shop, so there had to be counter space and those kind of things. Uh, I won't be needing as much of that. I would like to find a place for a little bit of countertop just to, you know, change a driver and a nail gun or lay tools out as I'm as I'm getting them out. But we'll see. If that doesn't work out, um, then it'll just be floor to ceiling boxes. Okay, we'll stop here and pick it up in the next video. If you like what you see on these videos here on the Polk channel, if you'll share them with others and like them, uh, it'll help more people find them and be able to view them. And of course, the more views I get, the more encouragement to make more videos. So if you like them, share them. And thanks for taking the time to watch.